For well over three decades, I've been calling for a regulation of the internet, for the internet to be regulated as a utility and the components of the internet to be regulated as media. Three decades. Such regulation, unequivocal, clear, paradigmatic, promulgated, would have prevented the case of Pavel Dorf. My name is Sam Baknin. I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. Pavel Durov was arrested on the 24th of August 2024 in France by its anti-fraud office, which is attached to the French Customs Authority. The arrest warrant issued by the French National Judicial Police listed 12 suspected violations regarding crimes on the Telegram platform, which is largely an unmoderated messaging and narrow casting platform. This raises a much larger issue, the issue of the Wild West that the Internet had become, has become. <laughs> With the advent of Web 2.0, Web 3.0 and UGC, user-generated content, the Internet has completed its transformation into an anarchic and lawless ochlocracy. Mob rule. The internet is a mass medium, and like all media, it must be regulated. The laws that apply offline must, and in due time, as legislators are exposed to the less savory aspects of the web, will apply online. Inevitably, the legal situation varies across countries and continents. Internet penetration has reached different levels at different times in different places. Thus, the following observations and recommendations are not universally valid or applicable. In some locales, various aspects of cyberspace have been tackled by governments and legislatures, albeit rarely fully and satisfactorily. In other places, the field is wide open and the Internet resembles the Wild West at its worst moments. Laws and regulations passed and intermittently enforced against cybercrime attempt to prevent and constrain only a few obviously illegal acts. Spammers, spyware purveyors, child pornographers and terrorists are the blatant tip of a much subtler iceberg of malicious and pernicious misconduct. USA legislation such as Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act of 1996 has largely exempted social media and messaging platform from any legal liability to the content that they end up hosting. This is shocking. There's a law in the United States that exempts social media and messaging platforms from any legal liability to illegal content that they're hosting. These are the following minimal initial steps that have to be taken in order to forestall a meltdown of this indispensable utility, the Internet. Number one, slander, libel and defamation versus free speech. The legal status of owners, editors, administrators, webmasters and moderators of websites, bulletin boards, forums, boards, groups, lists, wikis, UGC websites, online news sources, search engines and portals, blogging communities, all these people. The legal status of the owners, editors, administrators and webmasters and moderators of, and curators of these types of online presences should be equated to that of publishers and journalists in the print and electronic media. Consequently, they should be held liable to civil damages and to criminal charges arising from actionable libel and defamation posted on their properties if they don't act promptly to comprehensively remedy said libel and defamation. Internet service providers and hosting services should be obligated to disclose to law enforcement agencies and, to, and or to plaintiffs the full personal data of anyone who break the law by publishing or sending libelous, slanderous, defamatory, harassing or threatening content on 
or via the internet. Now, some countries have gone some way towards implementing this principle, the United Kingdom, for example. Others are still very far from implementing such a standard. Number two, privacy. The right to privacy of computer users should be embedded in consumer protection laws, allowing for criminal penalties to be imposed on the perpetrators of privacy breaches and for civil damages to the victims. Individuals and firms who accumulate personal data of suppliers, employees, customers and users, or who gain access to this data in the normal course of business. These should be obliged to protect and safeguard such information and to promptly notify those potentially affected of any incident involving the compromise of their personal data. Failure to act reasonably, diligently to provide or to prevent identity, to prevent identity theft, this should become a criminal offense. Exceptions should be made only for law enforcement needs, and even then, only pursuant to warrants issued by, by especially designated courts, the equivalent of FISA-mandated courts in the United States. Number three, copyright and intellectual property. Intellectual property laws should be considerably relaxed and fair use provisions considerably expanded in order to accommodate and reflect the nature, possibilities, and constraints of digital renditions of information. The USA's DMCA of 1998 is far too restrictive and hinders scholarship, free speech, and the uninterrupted flow of information. Even so, owners, editors, administrators, webmasters, curators, and moderators of websites, bulletin boards, um, wikis, UGC content, etc., etc., search engines, portals, blogging services, all of them should be held liable to civil damages and to criminal charges arising from infringements of copyrights and other intellectual property rights posted on or via their properties if they don't act promptly to comprehensively remedy said infringements. Internet service providers and hosting services should be obligated to disclose law enforcement to, to disclose to law enforcement agencies and or plaintiffs the full personal data of anyone who break the law by violating copyrights and other intellectual property rights on or via the internet. Next, anonymity. Anonymous or pseudonymous publishing of libelous, slanderous, defamatory, harassing or threatening content on the internet, including via email, instant messaging, mashups, wikis, you name it, should be explicitly and specifically made illegal. Owners, administrators, webmasters, moderators, etc., 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 should be made responsible to obtain the full names and countries of domicile of registered users, posters, contributors, and participants. Upon the first request of an injured party or a law enforcement agency, these services should be obligated to make personal data public in conjunction with the libelous, slanderous, defamatory, harassing, or threatening content published. Providing false personal data to owners, editors, administrators, moderators, etc., etc., of these services should be made a criminal offense, as well as give rise to civil damages. Providing false personal data or remaining anonymous while sending or posting libelous, slanderous, defamatory, harassing or threatening correspondence, for example via email, should be made cr a criminal offence, as well as give rise to civil damages. Internet service providers and hosting services should be obligated to disclose to law enforcement agencies and or plaintiffs the full personal data of anyone who breaks the law by anonymously or pseudonymously publishing or sending libelous, slanderous, defamatory, harassing, threatening content on the internet. Next, licensing and antitrust. All licensing requirements, content laws, and regulatory supervision that now apply to print and electronic media should apply to online media, online content of all kinds. 
the internet should be subjected to supervision and regulation by the relevant governmental oversight agencies, for example, in the United States, FCC, FTC, SEC, and others. Competition, antitrust laws and regulations shall be extended, should be extended, to apply to the internet, or where they are already applicable, should be enforced to ensure search neutrality, equal access to information, equal access to computing platforms, and fair competition. Truth in advertising and misrepresentations. The owners, editors, administrators, webmasters, moderators, curators of online platforms should have to truthfully describe the nature of their internet properties and all other pertinent information items that may be required by a reasonable user, including ownership structure, privacy policies, sources of information, affiliations, potential and actual conflicts of interest, outstanding lawsuits, risks associated with making use of, of these internet properties and other pertinent disclosures. Misrepresentations should be explicitly and specifically outlawed and carry both criminal penalties and civil liabilities. It is not too late to restore a semblance of lawfulness to the internet. True, the web has been hijacked by spammer, spammers, stalkers, criminals, big business, scammers, literally hijacked. Even honest users are clueless as to what is and is not allowed. As far as the overwhelming majority of surfers are concerned, voluntary codes of conduct and the much vaunted netiquette have utterly failed to render cyberspace safe, pleasant, or indeed serviceable. The invisible hand of the market is indeed nowhere to be seen, invisible. It is time for legislators and regulators to step in. Even a moderate dose of legislation and the willingness not to succumb to either mob or business pressures. Even this will go a long way towards restoring the internet to its original purpose, the civilized and lawful, not to mention pleasurable, exchange of information and opinion over computer networks.